<laughs> All right. Have you ever thought about life without television? Well, today I'm going to trace you the technological innovations of televisions. I will mention who had the first thoughts of television, who the first, or how the first sets work, and how TV has come such a long way. Let's start with the prehistory of television. From reading the article written by the History of Communications, the first thought process of television came from Giovanni Casilli in 1862 when he invented the pen telegraph that uh, transmitted images over telegraph lines. George Carey had the first drawing of psyllium camera, which could be seen by electricity. In 1900, in the World's Fair in Paris, Russian Konstantin uh, Persky made the first known word or use of the word television. And then in June uh, 14, 1923, Charles Jenkins invented a mechanical opening. I don't know what to do. Put the other one. Go it says previous. Sorry. Okay. Charles Jenkins invented a mechanical TV system, which was based on rotating discs and was called the radio vision. He also received the first U.S. television license for the W3XK and had the first television commercial. Um, and lastly, in the history or the history of communication, reported that Bell Laboratories and the Department of Commerce held the first long-distance transmission of a live picture and video and voice simultaneously. The star of this first televised show was Herbert Hoover, who said, Today, in sense, we have a transmission of sight for the first time in the world's history. Human genius has now destroyed the impediment of distance in a new respect and in manner hitherto unknown. Next, I'm going to mention some of the major advances in television. According to Mitchell Stevens, the Kulupsu, oh, that's right. is the colloquial cable, which is made from two conductive cores separated by a layer of insulating material, all wrapped up in another insulating layer, carried its first signals through TV from New York to Philadelphia. Television and color came into this world using a spinning wheel to add red and green and blue to the picture. Then it was up to the eye and the brain to merge them into the proper color patterns. In January, or January 1st, 1954, NBC showed the first coast-to-coast -coast color broadcasting of the Tournament of Roses Parade. Three months later, hundreds of color, vision, color television rolled off the assembly line for $1,000 apiece. Three months later, or, sorry, in 1967, most broadcasting was in color, and then in 1972, over half the homes in the United States had color tele tele television. Nine years after the color TV came out, Zenith released the first remote control called the Flashmatic. Um, the Flashmatic used visible light, but it didn't work very well in bright rooms, and if the sunlight had hit the television, you would get different effects than desired. Um, Zenith also released the Space Commander, created by all Robert Adler, which is said to be the first practical remote and relied on ultrasound. Then the home recording started when the first video cassette recorder, or as we know the VCR, hit the market when the Philips company made the first one. Then a year later, Sony introduced the Betamax, which could also record TV shows, as well as the RCA made the first VHS or the video home system. The VHS was obviously the most popular of the three recording systems, because even as I was growing up 20 years later, everyone had VHSs. Um, in the early 1980s, Stereo sound hit television, and it had originally been around since the 1880s, but only in radio stations, but was officially part of the US television in 1984. The stereo sound was created by synthesized stereo, where the stereo is uh, stimulated electronically. Here, there is a manual in which one channel, non stereo sound, is electronically processed to create the effect of two channel stereo signals. Reverberation adds to the effect of the stereo sound when reproduced through stereo speakers. Then the sound will be perceived as having more than one, dim uh, one dimension. In uh, the Discovery News article that I read, high definition, as we know it, HDTV television, came to the TV. It had been in the works for 30 years, and HDTV means that you can watch movies and television shows in a full widescreen format without having the letterbox or the black bars around the TV screen shown 
so it gives you more detail to look through the widescreen picture. One of the biggest advances in the TV technology is the HDMI cord. HDMI stands for High Definition Multimedia Interface that delivers a high definition material over a high definition connection. According to Steve Venetu, president of the HDMI licensing, the digital connection between high definition devices has become an essential component of any home theater. It not only gives you a digital connection, but it gives you the first finest quality possible with one single cable. With the HDMI cord, the content of devices offers even greater audio and video fidelity, including 3D experiences. Just four years after the HDMI made its appearance, in 2007, was hit with the popularity of 3D movies. 3D movies first made their appearance in 1980, when it required a set of the glasses on the left, um, with one of the lens being red and one of them being blue. Even though these glasses did work, most of the audience got big headaches and eye aches, and if you were to take them off during the movie, the picture was full of distorted wavy lines. Today, there are polarized glasses on the right, and people don't get headaches or eye aches from them. And even after a movie comes out in the theaters in 3D, you can also get them in 3D for your home theater as well. So today, I hope you enjoyed the historical facts of how television came about and the technological advances of television. Thank you for listening. presentation was, was at least well put together, prepared nicely, and, and you definitely uh, went through smoothly. Um, however, I thought when you were going to talk about life on the television, I, I imagine it might have been the creation process and then um, maybe all the way to the breakdown and recycling of it. But when you decided to talk about the history pro of the product itself and the technologies behind it, then I understood where you were going with it and it was, it was fine after that. Um, the visuals that you had, they definitely followed along with your uh, sort of like eclectic trivia knowledge that you presented to us, um, which was nice. It, it followed very, uh, very well. So uh, overall, I thought it was brilliant, brilliant to put together. Um, yeah. Thank you. That'll be the quote in the ad. Brilliantly put together. <laughs> All right, uh, there's a lot of stuff here that I think works really well. There are a couple of things that you need to work on. Uh, the topic is clearly identified. You've got a good thesis statement. There's an excellent preview. So the structural stuff at the beginning of the speech is fine. Uh, I think you've got a rhetorical question that you use as your attention device, but it goes by very quickly. It's not all that interesting. You might want to do something else to kind of lead us into this. Uh, as it was, uh, this is a topic that probably most people would be intrigued by a little bit and interested in, and it's, uh, there ought to be something that hooks us in a little bit more than that rhetorical question. So I, I just feel like that just doesn't live up to the subject matter that you're talking about. Now, it's very clearly organized chronologically, so we're going to go through this process, and there are so many you know, innovations and steps in that process that it's... Uh, you may need to, a way of grouping it. Maybe grouping it by time period or uh, by some section might have made a little bit of sense. Although we do have a timeline sort of development of ideas, uh, I think uh, you know, the, all the early stuff could be in one category and then maybe the uh, commercialization process in another category and then kind of the add-ons and extras in another category and it still would be chronological but I think it would be grouped a little bit more so it's not just like like Aaron said kind of random trivia it's not random because it's in order but it's just bits and pieces of trivia information that are occurring chronologically in the process and I think it needs to be a little bit more uh, contained than that I, I all the pictures are interesting I the, the early television ideas and concepts, for instance, to me, that might have been a good speech to talk about. Let's talk about television before it was actually television. You know, how did this work? Where did they come up with these things? Uh, you know, how, how did they envision it uh, working out? Why did we end up with this particular thing? To me, that's, a, that's an untold part of the story, and uh, it intrigues me enough that I would want to know more about that by itself. And then you talk about things that probably people are familiar with at the end. So um, 
how important is it to talk about those particular kinds of things in comparison to maybe something else? This would be one of those things where you probably could have figured that out.